the the solar wing. Like to concur with CCME for issue of perch three on engine one. The solar wing that uh, you're referring to is important for future shuttle flights and also for the planned U.S. space station to provide power in space for those vehicles. This has to be, as you mentioned, a major disappointment for NASA with the problems that they had when they lost the Palapa and the West Star satellites. That is, the satellites uh, went into errant orbits. It, it wasn't NASA's fault, but it was a, it was a, a blotch on the agency's record, and they wanted to set things straight with this launch, especially yeah, carrying the, another uh, satellite. One of the satellite owners uh, refused to put its satellite on board this spacecraft, concerned about uh, losing it on this mission. So instead of two satellites, there was one on board. Also, when you consider that this problem has cropped up a day after a major computer failure, which caused delay, the third uh, technical failure that has created a delay in the 12 shuttle missions. And again, we are not yet sure precisely what has happened here, if there is a computer problem or something wrong with, with one of the systems, but it has not been a good two days for NASA. And let us talk about the condition of the astronauts on board. Norm, when you were on that seventh flight and you uh, heard the countdown uh, reaching 10 and down to 3 and and two, the adrenaline was really pumping, wasn't it? It'll take a while for this crew to get over this second disappointment, won't it? It will take a long time, and uh, I was sitting there during that countdown sequence uh, thinking, boy, we're really going to get to do it, and I know that's what they wanted to experience today. So to come that close and then stop uh, has to be a disappointment, but I don't think that they're going to be so disappointed as to not want to try it again as soon as possible. When I said you had been on the fourth flight, I confused you with Henry Hank Hartsfield, the commander of this mission, who is the only experienced uh, spaceman on this flight. He was on SDS-4. The other members of the crew, Judy Resnick, who uh, will become and was to become the second American woman to fly in space, Steve Hawley, who is uh, scheduled to become the first husband of a U.S. space woman to fly in space. His wife, uh, Sally Ride, uh, preceded him in space. Richard Mullane is the other astronaut. And then there was a paying customer, Charles Walker, who was trained to do a pharmaceutical experiment on board. This was to uh, have been a flight used to prove out that uh, pure drugs can be manufactured in space. And the drug in question is a mystery drug, Peter. I don't think it's ever been released. Uh, the name of the drug has never been mentioned. That's right. It is uh, being, a, it's a closely guarded secret because this is a commercial venture rather than a government venture. And in the highly competitive pharmaceutical business, you don't want to tip your hand to your competitors. And so uh, it, it is generally believed uh, until this hormone that they're going to produce is is available for clinical testing. It won't be until that time that uh, the public will learn precisely what it's, what it's used for. Norm, I had a question about what the crew might be doing right now. Do they have instruments on board that might help them find out what happened? Or will that be done all at uh, launch control and mission control? We have quite a bit of instrumentation on board, but we do not by any means have the amount of information that flows into this console over in launch control and then later to mission control. I would suspect that the reason uh, will be found out by the controllers rather than the crew, although I'm sure that the crew is also looking at all those indications inside. And NASA has uh, now confirmed what we were talking about before, that there has never been such a main engine cutoff before. And I think what we're looking at there is the blockhouse at the Kennedy Space Center, Norm, the uh, launch control. And now we're back to the launch pad. Listen in. Long and rigorous process now of cooling the ship down and making it safe before the crew leaves to begin to plan for another day. And we, as yet, just don't know when that other day will be. Doubtful that they could get off tomorrow, but I can't say that with any degree of certainty. Water being sprayed on the main engines to cool them. Yes, 
Yesterday it was a computer problem that forced the cancellation of the flight. Today the weather was bad, then the weather cleared, and the countdown reached, uh, well, I don't know whether it was three or two, and the main engines were lighted, the ship was ready to go, and suddenly there was main engine cutoff, and that's something that uh, I believe is done by computer, isn't it, Norm? Yes, this uh, shutdown was apparently done by the onboard computers. They take over control of the launch sequence uh, right around 10 seconds, I believe, and from then on it's uh, strictly up to them as to whether it would launch or hold. Control. At the present time, uh, we did have indication that two of our fire detectors on the zero level of the mobile launcher platform were on. Uh, they are side-by-side -side directed approximately right at the engine area, and uh, upon notification of that, the uh, main engine... Uh, uh, engineer requested that we turn on the heat shield fire water, which is what was uh, could be seen spraying up in the vicinity of the engine bells of uh, Discovery's three main engines. Uh, the launch team is continuing their reconfiguration of the vehicle. Uh, the orbiter access arm has been put back in uh, place uh, up against the hatch so that the crew can get out as soon as the reconfiguration is completed. That little uh, round window there is the hatch that leads from the gantry to the spacecraft. Again, the indication is that one of the Spring three main engines the did the not light up. A, a precautionary measure. And they did not want uh, to fly with any two confirmation engines. confirmation that there was uh, uh, a fire or anything in the region of the uh, aft end, but uh, we did have a couple of uh, fire detectors that were on. So as a precautionary measure, we went ahead and turned on the uh, heat shield water, uh, which, uh, again, is being... Uh, uh, sprayed up into the engine bells of the three shuttle main engines. Again, they had a, a fire, their fire detectors indicated a warning, but uh, they have no evidence that there has actually been are, any uh, fire. The are uh, located somewhere in the vicinity of uh, about the uh, number three engine, which is the one on the right side uh, looking at the uh, engine. Uh, Peter and uh, Norm Thagard, I want to thank you. We'll probably get back to you. It happened within milliseconds, and it came at the end of an otherwise trouble-free countdown. Ten. We have a go for main engine start. Seven, six, five. We have main engine start. We have a cutoff. We have a, an abort by the onboard computers of the orbiter discovery. The stunning shutdown set off an equally dramatic chain of events as ground controllers and crew members proceeded coolly to throw the switches to shut off the systems to safeguard discovery, fire broke out at the base of the rocket ship. Three separate water dousings were required to put it out. Although the crew was out of danger within seconds, ground personnel wasted no time getting Discovery's hatch opened. It took only 38 minutes, record time, before the first of the six astronauts, Judy Resnick, emerged. The others followed shortly. The shutdown was caused by a problem in one of the three main engines. When its main fuel valve didn't open on command, requiring a backup system to get it going, Discovery's computerized launch system automatically shut all the engines down. The shuttle is not permitted to fly with only the backup command system. NASA still doesn't know whether a computer program or the four-inch valve or something else kept four and a half million pounds of shuttle and fuel and rocket on the pad today. As for the crew, some of whom went home to Houston today, this second disappointment in as many days was tempered by a sense of relief. As one NASA official put it, the failsafe system worked the way it was supposed to. Riding a rocket ship is not something that is uh, like uh, riding down the freeway itself. I think that the crew uh, was not in any danger that uh, hadn't been planned. I think that the actions taken were there to prevent it from getting into an uncontrolled situation. NASA won't set a new launch date until they understand fully what happened today. And at the moment, the failed liftoff means Discovery's maiden voyage is at least two weeks away. Lynn Scher, ABC News, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.